Radar Report. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. And also welcome to the Brook Cherith. We are at an amazing time. So much coming together that we've seen. I keep saying this because it's so true. There is so much showing us that this is an important time. The geopolitical situation, the peace and safety warnings, the celestial clock, the last generation. So many things are telling us that time is super, super short. And it's also showing us why the enemy is doing certain things at this time. Putting out so many distractions, trying to eat up our attention, our strength, our energy, our focus. Especially here when we have so much from a biblical perspective that tells us we see the day approaching. And when we know that time is short, we must be focused on redeeming the time. Making sure we are girded in His service, that our lights are burning. That is what needs to be consuming our focus at this time. Especially so much the more as we see the day approaching. Let us focus on what we are told to focus on. Let's be found holding fast to our beloved's words, His instructions, and His admonitions. There is so much telling us that time is super short. We are right now in the pregnancy parallel. Based on the peace and safety calls that went out on January 28th, this is what we've been looking at. We are at a high watch time right now. We've gone past 42 weeks in the potential pregnancy parallel picture. We've gone past 42 weeks. So we are now in a post-term picture that goes with a pregnancy parallel. That's what we've been looking at. So we still got a number of days here in this post-term part, which is actually part of a natural pregnancy. That's why we put it on here as we try to understand more of the potential pregnancy parallel that goes with the peace and safety warnings from when those calls were made. We've been trying to look at, okay, what is a natural pregnancy? And also, what is a natural pregnancy before our modern medicine too? The modern conception of four weeks of pregnancy variation, that's more of a modern conception and it's very skewed to those four weeks because a lot of doctors and nurses, OBGYNs, they try to push toward inducing labor before one gets past 42 weeks. And so that's why the statistics don't show many going past 42 weeks, even though they recognize that normally it would happen. But they press for inducing early, so that's why only statistically 1 in 10 pregnancies goes past 42 weeks. But if there wasn't that intervention from modern doctors and hospitals, the natural variation, it's recognized that the length of human pregnancy the variation can span 37 days, 5 weeks. And as more women are seeking to have a more natural birth and not induced in a labor and not going through all those stresses, there's a lot more information coming forward today that yes, it is 5 weeks and there's nothing wrong with waiting 5 weeks because that is natural. And so this is why I've updated the timeline from 4 weeks to 5 weeks to emphasize that yes, this is recognized This is a natural pregnancy. And since we're looking at the pregnancy parallel, let's try to get the best natural appearance of what that picture should be. And when we emphasize that it is a potential parallel, there are some things we don't know. We have the high expectation that this parallel would fit this time based on a pregnancy length from when those calls were made on January 28th. This is a potential window, which also means there is a potential for it to not be exactly within this window, but in this area. We do tell you that straight up. It's potentially in this area, but there is also the potential that it's not exactly within that window. There are some things we don't exactly know, so we just put our best educated guess that this appears to be the best window based on when the calls went out. That's all we have to work with. First Thessalonians 5 doesn't give much more of just pay attention to when the calls went out and the sun destruction is coming as a woman travailing in labor. So the window we're looking at now has the most potential, but we can't state concretely that it will happen in that. If it goes past the 24th, 25th, I'm not ignoring the picture. I just know that the best understanding would be around this area. And who knows how long the pregnancy should go. But we do know it's coming as a woman travailing in labor. And apparently she's very travailing in labor. And it's going to be very painful too. So a post-term overdue parallel does also appear to fit as well. And as I was doing the research about the pregnancy, it really caught my attention because our understanding of this pregnancy parallel is based on when the calls for peace and safety went out, the high watermark call on January 28th, which was given by President Donald Trump, who is very much in the news right now, also with this election fiasco too, which is drawing people's attention. So there's a lot that tells us these are closely, closely related. And then there was the peace signing not too long ago where they had a pregnant woman very obviously right in the White House signing area. They know what 
the calls of peace and safety are related to. Donald Trump knows exactly what he's doing. He knows he is part of bringing about the sun destruction. He knows that full well. So, and we also keep that in mind when we look on the timeline, when the election dates are going to be certified by, that's generally by December 8th. That's generally when the states have certified their elections. They've picked their electoral college voters. So there's a lot of fiasco and discussion and distraction going on right now relating to Donald Trump, who was the one who put out the calls for peace and safety, and he apparently knows full well exactly what's involved with those calls, too. But it also caught my attention with this pregnancy parallel. As I was starting to research going beyond 42 weeks pregnancy, a particular name popped up that was also related to these calls of peace and safety that we've heard about. Jackie Chan, of all people, popped up. Because apparently he's well known as an urban legend, although he insists it's true. He insists and he claims that he spent 12 months in his mother's womb, which is an awfully long time. But apparently he keeps reiterating in interviews and insisting that yes, this was true about him. And if you do a little bit of research online, apparently this is a urban legend that's very well known connected with Jackie Chan. That his pregnancy went way overdue. And apparently when he was born, he weighed 12 pounds, which is huge. And I could imagine that his mother would be very much travailing at that birth too. But she even nicknamed him Cannonball from that pregnancy duration. So whether it's true or not, apparently there is something to it. But it catches my attention more so that the claim is associated with Jackie Chan. And this catches my attention because back in October 18th at the Wuhan World Games, Jackie Chan was one of the primary singers at the ceremonial events there. Jackie Chan, the one associated with an extended pregnancy. So again, there's multiple things here. When the peace and safety calls went out at the Wuhan Games, they were associated with someone whose pregnancy was already overdue, way overdue, apparently, according to urban legend. So there's that association with him with, with a direct tie to peace and safety calls that went out related to Wuhan, China, which of course really blossomed at the Chinese New Year, the same time the peace and safety calls went out by President Trump, who also later with their signing ceremonies also emphasized pregnancy in relation to it too. So there's a lot that we don't know the specifics of exactly how long this parallel with the pregnancy can go. But it does catch my attention that there's more than one emphasis by the enemy that they know the pregnancy picture goes with this. So I'm watching particularly this post-term window, but also beyond that. It could go beyond that. And maybe that's what they're hinting with Jackie Chan, that it's going to be a very post-term, a very overdue pregnancy. I don't know. All I know is there is a connection, and Scripture tells us this in 1 Thessalonians 5, that the pregnancy parallel does go with the peace and safety calls when they were said. So we are watching this, and even though we are looking at a potential window, understanding that there could be some fuzziness about exactly when that is, understanding it's still going to be limited to this general area. It's not going to wander too far, apparently. And with all the peace and safety warnings that we've seen with Israel and Trump during this year, they keep pointing back to January 28th. They know that was a high water mark. And so we just have a lot that tells us the pregnancy picture is in play and applies to this area where we are right now. So we're looking at our best understanding of the potential window. And we're in a portion right now approaching 43 weeks. Doesn't mean it can't go beyond that either, but we are just looking at the best way that we can nail it down to a ballpark figure, a potential window, right when we see so many other celestial pictures going on. When we zoom in just a little bit, we're coming up to the time where Jupiter will soon be at the tail of Sagittarius, the first week of December. And so that means it's going to be slowly easing out of the picture of Sagittarius. The prophetic picture where we are expecting judgment to be released on the enemy. When Jesus Christ stands up, when he takes a scroll, when he opens the sealed judgments, and those are released on the world and his enemy. And so we see on the celestial clock, here at the same time in the context of the pregnancy picture too, which tells us that that sudden destruction is expected. That sudden destruction that is coming upon the face of the whole earth. We see the celestial clock ticking down in the hour and chapter, so to speak, relating to the best picture that seems to summarize that. And the other day I was able to take a picture just of Sagittarius and Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn's on the left, Jupiter's on the right there. And approaching the stars that are associated with the tail. And I'd like to go out every night and just look at the celestial clock because it reminds me not just of what the time is now, 
but also reminds us how the Lord has brought us to this place. Now he's given so much wisdom and strength and liberty and understanding about the celestial clock, how that goes with the geopolitical timing, the last generation, peace and safety calls. Everything is coming together right on time. And the more we go outside, look up, and lift up our heads, we will know and be reminded that our redemption draweth nigh. Why? Because we see on the clock that time is ticking down. There is an expected time when the redemption, the pickup of a purchased possession, will take place. We will see time running out for when these things will be happening in. There is a certain window, a certain time frame, and it is best seen on the celestial clock. Now on the timeline, which again you can find a link in the description box, check it out. We are looking at the pregnancy parallel picture time frame, but we're also looking at the nearby time when apparently the celestial clock of this particular prophetic chapter runs out. We're looking at both of these. And which one really takes priority more? I would say the celestial clock one, because we can see that with very clear and distinct details. We know when the celestial clock is going to be pointing beyond this current chapter of Sagittarius. There is some fuzziness with the pregnancy parallel picture. We do know and suspect that it applies in this area, even though it is going overdue. There is some fuzziness with that, but with the celestial clock, we can see precisely and distinctly where it is, and we know that Jupiter is on its way out of that constellation very soon. So of the two, I'm actually watching the constellation, the celestial clock, what it declares. I'm watching that foremost and keeping in mind the pregnancy picture knowing we're looking at a potential window with some potential variation in that. So that's how I take the two but this is why I like to go outside and be reminded of the time, be reminded of the journey but also be reminded that we see that time is running out. We see that our redemption draweth nigh because time is running out on what the heavens declare, what the heavens are declaring about this time. Our Lord wanted us to look up, he wanted us to lift up our heads because he wanted us to know the time. He wanted us to know that your redemption draweth nigh. That's why he said, look up, lift up your heads. I want you to know this. Your redemption draweth nigh and you will know it when you look at the celestial clock. Because God wants us to know the time. So when we go outside in the evening, we can see the celestial clock. We could also see that Jupiter is soon going to be leaving this constellation. The first week of December, it's going to be right at the tail of Sagittarius, stars associated for a very long time with the tail of Sagittarius, and it's going to be heading out of the constellation after that. It's not going to be circling back. And so the expectation of things being released is while the King of Righteousness picture is still pointing to this chapter. And we also know at the end of that month, just about three weeks later, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be meeting up in a very, very rare conjunction just past Sagittarius. So you could even say just at the end of the conceptual artwork the concept that goes with Sagittarius because it's not limited exactly to dots the the picture goes a little bit beyond that so the end of this year December 21st we have that very rare conjunction super close hadn't happened that closely for hundreds of years back to the 1600s so very rare with the king of righteousness coming very close to time Saturn representing time so I'm watching, and theoretically, the picture could extend all the way up to the end of this year, to that moment when the King of Righteousness meets time. But of course, the expectation is that our Lord will return before it meets and comes to the very end of that, particularly during the pregnancy parallel when the sun destruction is coming and how that is coming. So that does back us up a little bit, but we do apparently see a bookend when this tapestry of redemption that we've seen ever since the Star of Bethlehem Reminder Signs concluding a story, a non-stop story that we have seen with a whole ribbon, a tapestry of rare celestial signs punctuating along the whole line there. We are told we will look up and we will know that our redemption draweth nigh. We will know time by looking at the celestial clock. And this is what we must never forget. We are told we will know time. We will know the shortness of time. We will know we need to redeem the time by looking at the celestial clock. Now several months ago we covered in our video Coming as a Thief, you can find a link in the description box, definitely watch it if you haven't. We covered how Christ specifically and repeatedly emphasized that we will not know the exact day nor the exact hour that he is coming. He is deliberately adding ambiguity to it because he does not want us to know the exact day. 
This is why he keeps emphasizing you will not know the exact day. That's why you need to watch. You need to stay on your toes. You need to keep watching. You need to keep looking up. You need to keep lifting up your heads. And you need to be girded in service and with your lights burning. But you will not know the day or hour. You will not know the exact time. You will just know that time is running out. You will know a window of expectation. There is a time frame when we will know our redemption draweth nigh, even though we won't know the exact day. We will see that time is running out, and the expectation will be high within that time, especially as we see it drawing more and more nigh, as we see it approaching down to the last minute, so to speak, even more and more. But we've talked about this before, but there's been one aspect that we haven't covered before. Christ mentioned that no man knows a day or hour, not even the angels in heaven. And this is what a lot of people seem to forget oftentimes. Even the angels that behold the face of our Father in heaven, they don't know the day or hour when Christ is coming. Even the angels who show John things about the future, even things in the book of Revelation, he showed them things that will happen in the future. But even they don't know, even though they know certain things about the future. This is such a closely held secret that even the angels don't know. The ones who have the most inside information, they don't know. But this brings up an interesting question. If the angels don't know when Christ is coming, do they know when the end of the tribulation is? Do they know when Jesus Christ will be setting up his kingdom? Also with that question is, does the enemy know when Christ will be setting up his kingdom too? The angels in heaven don't know. The angels out of heaven don't know when Christ is coming. But we all know when time is running out. And this needs to catch our attention that the Bible tells us there are certain times and dates that the angels in heaven don't know. Obviously, the angels outside of heaven don't know. Mankind outside of heaven doesn't know. But the Bible also tells us that there are dates in time relating to prophecy that both the angels in heaven do know and also the fallen angels and the devils know about time too. Matthew 8, 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? That's a very interesting statement that the devils made directly to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right here in the book of Matthew, where Jesus Christ himself talks about you won't know the day or hour, and even the angels in heaven don't know the day or hour. But here in that same book, he mentions that the devils do know a certain time when their time runs out. They know there is an appointed day when their judgment will be given out, when even Satan will be bound for a thousand years. There is a time that they know those things will happen on. And I've mentioned this before, when we see the cause of peace and safety, the enemy does know certain things about time. They know when the proverbial end of the world is coming. The enemy does know that. The Bible even tells us that. Satan knows exactly the day when he is scheduled to be bound for a thousand years. The devils know when they are scheduled to be thrown in the lake of fire. And I can guarantee you they are counting down the days. They know exactly to the day that that will happen. They know the day and hour when their time runs out. The enemy does know the time. Revelation 12, a very familiar chapter, but talks about the war in heaven. Verse 12, after Satan has been cast down, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. In this event of the war in heaven and Satan being cast out when he loses that battle, this event is tied directly with the celestial star date recorded with the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd, 2017. And so this catches our attention how scripture ties these two together and lets you know these are connected together. The picture and the symbolism of the one shows us and gives an idea of what's going on in the heavens at that celestial star date. There is something going on when also the context of all the surrounding events is also going on, which has not happened yet. We've seen the Revelation 12 sign, but it has not happened in context yet, because the world is going to see the Revelation 12 sign again. But scripture emphasizes right when Satan is cast down, he is full of great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. And this goes back to Matthew 8:28. 
the enemy does know the time. They know there is a scheduled time when their torment, when their imprisonment in the lake of fire is going to start, and when Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years too. The devils and the fallen angels know exactly when their time is up. They know it's also tied to a celestial star date. When the Revelation 12 sign happens, there is exactly 1,260 days after that celestial date marker. And that's why Satan is so angry when he's cast out at that celestial star date marker. Because he knows he has but a short time, only three and a half years. He's going to continue for three and a half years after that point. Because he knows there is a time on the calendar when he is imprisoned. He can no longer change that after he loses the war in heaven. Satan, the fallen angels, the devils, they know exactly to the day when the tribulation will end. They know when they are going to be imprisoned and locked up. They know the day. They know the time. And this is something we've talked about before, particularly with the celestial learning journey that the Lord has shown us, going back to all the celestial signs on the celestial clock that our Lord has told us, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Time is running out. You will see the day approaching when you look up, when you lift up your heads. You will know that the day is approaching when time is running out. And so we've been reviewing how even the enemy apparently has known time is running out, even back at the 2012 London Olympics, really emphasizing that they know their Phoenix event and the prophetic events are about to start and occur within a certain time frame. And related to time, there's also a huge emphasis on time in those ceremonies as well. But here we are when we see also on the celestial clock a rare celestial sign upcoming when the king of righteousness, Jupiter, who has been throughout all these celestial signs we've seen since the Star Bethlehem signs back in 2015, now coming up to have a super close conjunction with Saturn, marking time right at the end of this year, punctuating and apparently ending all these pictures and this whole tapestry, this story of the prophetic expectation, where we are expecting our king to stand up and start making his enemies his footstool within this time frame. And also picking up his purchased possession at the rapture right before he opens those seals. And we've talked about apparently if you do the math from 1,260 days after the celestial date marker of Revelation 12 sign, you will come to March 6th, 2021, which is also 42 months, three and a half years after that celestial date marker, a short time after that celestial date marker. And it appears that on that date, that is Satan's scheduled incarceration. It's also the scheduled time when Christ's kingdom was going to start. Scheduled. And pay attention to what I'm saying about scheduled. That does not mean it's going to start in just a few months. It means that's when it's scheduled. That's when it's on the calendar. But, as we've covered before, as Christ emphasized also, and Daniel emphasized, and Christ emphasized, pay attention to what Daniel said, the Antichrist will be given the power to change times and laws. He is going to reset time, to give himself more time. Because the fallen angels, the devils, Satan, they know when their time is. They know when they are scheduled to be thrown in the lake of fire, when Satan is scheduled to be bound for a thousand years. The devils are going to be thrown in the lake of fire, apparently, right at the beginning of the millennial kingdom. They're not going to be a problem at all during the thousand years of Christ's reign. And, of course, Satan isn't either, because he's going to be bound for a thousand years. They know when the time is. It, apparently, is 1,260 days after the celestial date marker that we are told about in Scripture. A date that goes with when Satan knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. And we've also been told by Daniel and Christ that Satan will be resetting time. He will be messing with time to give himself more time. And Christ himself also told us that Christ is also going to be changing time too. Christ is the one who has to shorten time because Satan has given himself more time to do things on his agenda. In prophecy, there's two people playing with time. Satan is playing with time with his Antichrist, but also Christ is changing and messing with time as well. Because it's part of the war. There's a time battle going on before the time. Because one is trying to avoid the time, and the other is getting things to end up on time. And just like the biblical precedent set with Joshua, getting more time with the sun and moon stopping, that wasn't changing time, but that was adjusting the constructs that measure time, measure particularly a day. Satan is going to be giving himself more time than that. But by adjusting that, 
Time was gained to a tactical advantage then. Time was gained, more time was gained. We also see that in the account of Hezekiah. When Hezekiah was running out of time because of his illness and God turned back the sundial to represent that he was going to be given more time. So we keep those two precedents in mind that when scripture does record that time constructs have been manipulated, it's always been to gain more time because that's what you need. You need more time. Now, the Bible doesn't say why God will allow Satan to change times and laws. But the more that I think about it and just look at the two precedents that Scripture does record about Joshua and Hezekiah, we have to consider that God is a just God. He's also a righteous judge. And the book of Job records how Satan comes before God as the accuser of the brethren. And God does grant him certain things for Satan to make his case in different situations or to prove and really see what the result is. And so again, while scripture doesn't say why God allows the Antichrist to change times and laws, we do see from precedent that it probably is related to the fact that Satan is asking for equal time. If Joshua was allowed to change time, then certainly Satan, and something more commemorative for his status, Satan is probably making the argument that he should be allowed to do it as part of equal time or something before the righteous judge. That is my main suspicion particularly when we see that's what Satan normally does in the account of Job. And particularly the book of Daniel and the prophecies given in Daniel were not that long after the events with Hezekiah and the sundial there too. They're very closely related, one's following the other. So I believe Satan is being allowed to change time during the tribulation time unrestrained because the precedent has been given and allowed for humans. So Satan is asking for equal time. That's why I suspect it. So as we see that the devils know time, Satan knows the time, the fallen angels know the time, when their time runs out, what is their main tactical thing they're going to try to do? Gain more time. Change time to get more time before the time. You can't go forward in time. You can only go to the past, and particularly a past alternate timeline that hasn't been required. Because the past is required, as Ecclesiastes tells us. And the Bible also tells us there are alternate timelines, though, that aren't required. Because those are the paths that weren't taken. Those were the choices and decisions that weren't made. And you can't go forward in time because you'd be skipping decisions that have to be made. Decisions that require accountability. You can only go back to a time when you have time, but on a timeline where that time is not yet accountable yet. So when we look on the celestial clock and we see the time ticking down from the Revelation 12 marker, which apparently marks when the countdown starts, the 1,260 days from that point, to when Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years, the time, which also appears to be the same time when the devils are cast into the lake of fire because they are not present apparently during the millennial kingdom. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire with the Antichrist and the false prophet right at the start of the millennial kingdom, not even waiting for the great throne judgment. There is a time that they're trying to avoid. In the celestial heavens, which also shows us the time, tells us that there is something about time that has not happened yet. The Revelation 12 sign has not happened in context with the tribulation events going on around it, with the war in heaven at that time either. We've gone past the marker, gone past the mile marker, which also means we're getting pretty close to our destination with time running out. But we also know from prophecy, Daniel and Christ, that time will be reset. The Antichrist is going to change time to his advantage. There's going to be time looping, apparently, also when the bombless pit is opened. So going back in time, somewhere apparently end of 2012, sometime in 2013 possibly, gaining more time, prophetic events happening, leading to a signing of covenant with many, that everybody knows is for seven years because everybody knows they're trying to avoid something in seven years. Going back in time, time looping, and during that time looping, Satan's not worried about running out of time because he literally thinks he has all the time in the world because he controls all the time in the world. Satan is not worried about his time running out as long as the Antichrist is changing times and laws. He's not worried about his time running out at all because he knows they're avoiding coming to the time. But when he loses the war in heaven, he loses his technological playtime, when he loses his technological advantage and whatever else was part of him playing with time, when he loses all that, that is when he's angry. 
because he now knows that there is nothing he can do to avoid the time. They will be tormented on time, at the time. And so we take into consideration for us today, when we are told to look up, lift up our heads, and we will know that our redemption draweth nigh, that ties in the tapestry, the celestial learning journey that the Lord has shown us related to the Revelation 12 sign. A lot of people think, oh, that's in the past, it's over, it's, it's not important anymore. No, it's very important in understanding prophecy. There's a reason why it's in Revelation chapter 12. Because it helps our understanding today as we see our redemption drawing nigh. As we see the day approaching. It all deals with what is the celestial clock showing about time. How much time is left? What is the final chapter when time is running out? When we look on the timeline, we see so much telling us about the time. We see the celestial heavens showing us the time, but we also see the enemy warnings that go with sun destruction that they know are connected, that they also know is connected to a pregnancy parallel. Why are they putting this out at a certain time? Because they know the time. They know time is running out. They also know this is the time to put out those warnings when they're also being allowed to put out those warnings because other certain prophetic events are about to be set into motion. The sudden destruction, the opening of the bottomless pit, the very bizarre and crazy perplexing events, as the Bible terms it. Perplexing events are about to start very soon. Time is running out. Both sides know this. And the more that we look at the timeline and we go outside and we look up and lift up our heads, we should also be utterly amazed and astounded to remember what our Lord has shown us along the celestial learning journey. Not just what's up in the heavens or the geopolitical events and the last generation and the calls for peace and safety, but also what has God been showing us here on the ground level with the brook Cherith that dovetails exactly with the time remaining and what is about to happen. All of what the Lord has shown us ties together. We are at an incredible time where we should be watching because we know that our redemption draweth nigh. It's drawing nigher and nigher, closer and closer every single day. We see the day approaching because we see time is running out. And in context of everything that God has shown us about time, the celestial time, the geopolitical time, He's also shown us this is a time to redeem the time. Are we doing that? And it has been incredible to see how the Lord has been working here on the ground level here at the Brook Cherith. An example, a demonstration, an encouragement even for you. Find some way to redeem the time. Find a way to be girded in His service. Being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ here at this late hour. Knowing that time is running out. And so much the more as we see that time is running out. As we see the day approaching. We are running out of time. We are running out of opportunities. We are running out of accountable opportunities. Let us be found girded in a service with our lights burning because we know the time is short and we will burn the midnight oil to get the most out of this time that's remaining. And it is so amazing to reflect how God has been working at the book chairs, particularly bringing things together, getting ready for the rapture library, which dovetails exactly with the time that he has brought us to on this learning journey, which encapsulates and brings together all the posters and resources, everything Christ has shown us on this learning journey about the heavens, about this time, about the last generation, about the cause for peace and safety, everything that the Lord has shown us on this learning journey He's enabling us to pass that information on to those in the days ahead. To show them about the time. To show them the truth and power of God's word. He that is true. We see it in God's word. We see it in our life. The more that we spend in God's word, the more we see him at work in our life. At work in our world. See so much the reality of the time. The more that we go forward in faith. Lord what do you want me to do? He will put us to work. And we will see Christ in such amazing ways. That we would miss if we're not paying attention to the time. If we're not going forward in faith. It has been amazing to see how the Lord has prepared so many resources. How he's given everything ready for this Rapture Library trailer. Compiling all this information. Making it readily available to those in the days ahead. And so much is coming together. We still don't have a trailer yet. But... The past few days particularly, the Lord has really been bringing things together. I know it is so close. A lot of final details have been prepared. We've been filling up all the baskets, the resources. The Lord has been preparing so much, getting it ready. 
I was counting all the posters the other day and there's over 40 posters and different signs of information that are going to be in the Rapture Library trailer. 40 posters! And when you count the ones that are duplicates that are going in the cubicles, there's almost 50 posters that are going to be in this entire trailer. Posters full of information, full of encouragements, posters full of the calls for salvation. So much prepared for such a time and day as that that they will take with them into the days ahead. They will remember that, how the Lord brought them to such an incredible place and time because He was trying to show them His grace, His love, His mercy, and His call for service in the days ahead too. For them to rise up and shine bright for Him, to bear testimony of Jesus Christ and of the Word of God. And so it's been amazing, particularly over the past few days, even with all this storm stuff, just preparing and getting everything ready, getting these baskets ready, making sure all the tracks are in the right spot. And that's taken several hours just to do all that too. And the Lord brought up different materials and resources that we were short on some. And so the Lord at the same time brought in timely provision where we could order 2,000 more tracks and more resources for different religions out there that we can add to the library. Just really make it address a lot of different concerns and questions that people have at that very important hour when people are going to have some very important questions about their souls, about the time when it is going to be brought to the ever-present reality that Time is short. The days of Noah and Lot, they've ended. The world has changed. Prophecy is true. So much is going to be emphasized on that day that they will be considering and mulling over. And it really is incredible, particularly in light of the hurricane Zeta that came through and the storm damage that I've been having to help and clean up with. Seeing how these two are connected, it really is amazing. Again, we don't have a car hauler trailer yet, a 53-foot car hauler trailer. We don't have that yet, and I, I really don't have any inkling idea of how we're getting it yet. But I do highly, highly suspect that it's going to be related in some way to what's going on here, helping the owners across the street with their trailer. Because the Lord has worked it incredibly. Just the people He's brought my path across, even with the neighbors, just other things that He's set in motion. Just yesterday, the Lord really answered a large prayer and actually gave great liberty. I can't go into details because it's very personal details and other aspects of it that I can't discuss. But the Lord really worked amazingly yesterday. That's really going to help enable the Rapture Library. Just the staging of it and getting everything ready once we do get it. Not directly related to getting a trailer, but it's going to be a huge, huge help when we do get it. So I see the Lord working throughout this whole storm event. And it was also incredible too. The last 14 posters that we ordered for the Rapture Library, the ones that covered the Mark of the Beast, a lot on time, and parables of Jesus Christ, just reviewing those. I had put in an order for 14 of these final posters, and they finally came in, and it was the very, very next day that Hurricane Zeta hit. The very next day. And so it, it catches my attention right now in hindsight, seeing how the Lord prepared all the posters. He prepared all the resources. He got it all ready. And then immediately segued into his hand at work, which appears to be how he's going to indirectly or directly also bring about the Rapture Library for the materials and resources that he has prepared. It was the very next day. And what I've seen how the Lord has worked since then, and particularly yesterday, just how the Lord is preparing a foundation. There's different dominoes that are coming together. And again, I don't know the conclusion, but I highly suspect that the Lord is working so that his hand will be seen totally, wholly, completely, when the rapture trailer shows up. Working in a way that only he could orchestrate. And we've seen this demonstrated in different aspects with the other two trailers, especially the generator trailer, how the Lord works in incredible ways. And I see his hand already at work abundantly leading toward that, it appears. And so even though it, it seems like I'm suddenly working on something not related to the rapture trailer all of a sudden, I see that it is related. It's very much related. It's also related to a lot here at the Brook Cherith, again, that I can't go into detail on. The Lord is working incredibly here at this late hour. Now, it's interesting, on Monday, I was working at the trailer, helping them clean up, and one reason why it's taking forever is because I'm the only one helping them clean it up. My neighbor helped with clearing some of the trees, but he has to work, and, you know, that's pretty much all he is going to help with. You know, i got to sort through the actual stuff that's in this person's house. And praise the Lord, most of all, what can be salvaged has been salvaged. So there's still just a little bit of cleanup left. 
But on Monday, it was really interesting because this trailer that the tree fell on had a little portable shed behind it. It's about 8 foot by 16 foot. And I didn't know what was in it, but we were going to have a scrap guy come and just clear off everything, including this shed. So I figured, well, let's go ahead and clean out the shed too. Now, when I opened it up, it was really amazing. I felt like I was on one of those antique TV shows where they're picking through stuff and picking out the valuable antiques because <laughs> I was surprised how many antiques were in this little shed. And you can tell they had been sitting there for probably about 20 years. I'm not kidding. 20 years. Nobody had been in this shed. Old rockers, old chairs, old wooden bed frames, uh, a huge wardrobe, uh, incredible stuff. Not overly valuable, but still they were antiques. But it was, it's more interesting to me some of the documents and papers and photos that were in this shed. Now, one of our recent community posts, I had mentioned that I believe the Lord is delaying the rapture trailer on purpose. Mainly because when it is finally here, it's a 53 foot trailer, it's going to draw a lot of attention. Some of it unwanted attention. And I mentioned how I believe the Lord is delaying because there is a strong Freemason Masonic influence in this area. It goes back a long time in this area. They're very thick in this area. So it caught my attention that I had mentioned that several days ago about please keep me in prayer because the enemy is active in this area. Very active. And the Lord seems to be preparing this rapture library for an area where there is much darkness. And the Masons do embrace the darkness. That's the part of the oath of the third degree, embracing the darkness. There is much darkness in this area. And so I believe the Lord is purposefully delaying the rapture library, which can be assembled really quick when it does come here, but he's delaying it till the last moment just because it will attract a lot of unwanted attention and enemy attention. So again, please keep the Brook Cherith in prayer. Please keep the rapture library in prayer. Keep me in prayer that the Lord will encamp his angels around for protection, for liberty, to enable what the Lord is working here to be done, and to be done with great liberty, with great strength and efficiency. Please keep me in prayer. So it caught my attention that I had mentioned that prior to cleaning out this shed, that I was concerned that the Masons are very strong in this area. And as I was going through some of the old trunks that were in this shed, you would not believe how much stuff was crammed in this shed. There's some old trunks, and as I opened them up, there's a bunch of old photos. But then I came across the emblematic chart of Masons. Two different Masons that had been in this area. I've censored out the names because they still have kinfolk in this area. But it was really amazing to find these documents, because normally you don't find these because they like to keep these pretty close to themselves. But... The emblematic chart and the parchment of greetings, that was very interesting because it went back to 1889. 1889, very, very old. It was falling apart as I unrolled it and opened it up. But then another person from the 1960s who is apparently related to them, they also had their past master certificate and a certificate of proficiency in the Masons as well. And I, as I was opening and looking at all this stuff, I just had to shake my head, just particularly after I had made that other community post warning people, you know, they, they are thick in this area. Please keep me in prayer. And then the Lord showing me, yes, they are very thick in your area. Very, very thick. And, and I know some of these people, by going through their belongings and everything, they were deacons in the local churches too. So it's incredible just the Lord, how he's showing me and reinforcing things, how he is working at this certain time and the suspicions about how he's delaying things purposefully, that does appear to be very valid. He does seem to be doing things in his timing for a very certain reason and a very important reason. And particularly if you get on the bad side of very hardcore Masons, you can expect a lot of resistance. And I've seen a little bit of that, I highly suspect, in other ministry things that I've done in several years ago. So definitely please keep me in prayer, please. But one other thing that caught my attention was a scrapbook, a very old scrapbook, just barely holding together. And it did not have a lot of material in it. It looked like they just started scrapping a few newspaper clippings in there and then they stopped. So there, there wasn't much in it, but there were two newspaper clippings in it that definitely caught my attention. One was of the royal wedding for the Queen of England. The exact newspaper account here in the Birmingham News of that day when it happened with the wire photos from that event too and it's really incredible just to review and see this timely subject right here at the time just when the Lord had finished really emphasizing the crown hold fast to your crown the whole emphasis on the bride of Christ the one who will sit with him in his throne 
And then here, right in context of the other things that the Lord has been concerning me about, with how the Lord is working and purposefully delaying, how he's also showing all of this work, even here at this trailer, right here with this storm damage, it's all part and connected to what the Lord is working. The Lord is working through what he's doing here at this trailer. It's all part of this broke chair preparation that he's been working. And he's showing it in so many little, little ways. And it's also incredible because then I turned the page and then it talks about presidents and a new president coming onto the scene was when President Roosevelt died. The newspaper put out on April 13th, 1945. And so this was, and it caught my attention just because of the election fiasco going on right now. But then just the verbiage on these newspaper clippings, end comes suddenly. I'm like, wow, that's what the exact thing that we're expecting here at this time when we are told to hold fast to our crowns and I turn the very next page and end comes suddenly and presidents. Wow, uh, it just, just blew my mind. And then when I flipped, there's a little tab of the newspaper clipping there. On, when I flipped it, when it's folded down normally, it had the word peace on that folded down part. I was like, wow, you see peace up at the top, then in comes suddenly. It's like, wow, this is just incredible. I just had to shake my head just how the Lord is showing so many ways that his hand is at work. Even though it seems like in things that aren't even connected, he is working in them and through them for his reason for this time. And particularly yesterday with how the Lord gave great liberty, I see that yes, definitely the Lord is working through what's going on over there at the neighbors, that he is preparing something and it is related to this understanding of the time and the sun destruction that we do see coming. The Lord is working, working incredibly. Revelation 3.11 Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Here at this late hour, we have so many reminders about how short time is that our Lord is coming quickly, that we can look up, we can lift up our heads, we know our redemption draweth nigh. We see the day approaching because he has shown us an understanding of the time and we can look on the celestial clock and see not just the time, but the prophetic understanding at this time, the expectation at this time, expecting our Lord to stand up and start making his enemies his footstool. We see that our redemption draweth nigh. And as we have so many things about the Lord working and showing us as we see the day approaching in so many ways, as we see our Lord even emphasizing that he is coming quickly, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We see the day approaching. We see the time is running out, so we see that we must redeem the time. Let's redeem the time, friend. Let's provoke one another unto love, demonstrations of love, and also to good works. Let's be found girded in his service. We have heard so many trumpet calls at midnight, so many things emphasizing to us how time is running out. Let's rise up without excuses, without regrets too. Let's rise up when our Lord calls us to do something. Let's do it. Let's be found faithful. Let's be found in his service. Let's be found girded, and let's be found with our lights burning rising up, trimming our lamps, and going out to meet the bridegroom, hearing him, heeding him, loving him, and serving him, first and highest above all else. Maranatha!